Hi, good afternoon everybody. Uh, <clears throat> we, welcome to uh, day six of the shutdown. Um, bit of a quiet day today. Uh, I did the um, loading the kiln this morning, the tiny kiln. I've done a video of that. We'll cut to that in a minute. And then I uh, did some um, turning. So uh, First of all, I'd like to answer a few questions. People have been very kindly asking questions and making really nice comments on the videos. I'm glad everybody's liking them. Um, one of them, what questions that came up from the a couple of videos ago was why do I make the tea balls that I make and the sort of Japanese based, the Korean based work? And uh, that's that's an hour long video. That, I mean, I can talk to you all day about why I chose that kind of thing. And if you look at my website, which is stevebootonceramics.com, then there's a whole thing about why I choose the, to make the, 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 the pots I make. But briefly, it's when I was a teenager, we had a really good youth leader, a youth, a youth worker, and he used to show us all sort of art house movies. And he showed us a film called The Hidden Fortress, which was by Kurosawa, and it was a Japanese film, black and white. And what I didn't realise until a few years ago is that it was the basis for George Lucas's Star Wars. He saw that, and it's about an, it's about a, a princess who wants to overthrow the, an empire. <clears throat> anyway, and she's in hiding with two characters. So that's where the basis for Star Wars came from. So I saw that when I was 16, I was just mesmerised by it. And I've liked all things Japanese since then. So um, it, seems, it was just a sort of... Um, natural progression into making uh, Japanese pottery. When I left university I made ordinary um, tableware and, and uh, wheel thrown work, western style pots, but I wasn't really happy with that. And then I saw an exhibition in 2011, I think it was 2011, by Ken Motsuzaki and I thought I want to make pots like that. So that was this watershed moment that it's all down to Ken Matsusaki. Anybody who hasn't come across his work up to now, just uh, Google it. It's phenomenal, phenomenal work. Uh, so that's the answer to that question in brief. I could go on forever. And the second question that I can answer is, um, that I mentioned my shard pile at the back of the kiln room. And what do I do with the shards? Well, I'm saving them up. At the front of the, built the, shop, at the, front of the house here, it's a slope. And I'm building it up so I can park my van on the front of the house. So there will be a retaining wall going in. And then all the shards from the back that I'm saving, it's a huge pile. They're all going to be hardcore. And they're all going to go into the back of here. Now in about, my theory is that in about, I don't know, a few thousand years time, when they dig over this and time team come along and do a documentary about this area, they're going to be convinced that there was a huge pottery industry in the south of Sheffield when they come across my shard pile. And what were all these Japanese potters doing living in Sheffield? And I'm just really going to, it's going to mess them up really. So that's my theory behind it. So anyway, that's what I'm doing my shards. Right, okay. Now, uh, first video of the day is me packing the little kiln uh, and trying to show you one-handedly how I set the kiln setter and, and the tumble stack. So that's that. So we'll just do that now. Right, it's just a question of uh, seeing where things fit, really. I'll have to take them out a couple of times. They seem to be filling the space nicely. Oops. If 
you can see um, just in here is where we put the oops put the cone that's the cone and uh, it bends like that switches the kiln off so uh, I'm just going to carry on regardless Stuff that in there. Might be better to put this one in the centre. So there we have it, tumble stacked, they're all just wedged in there, I'm leaving the uh, the cone separate, so nothing leaning on there. Uh, I've got one or two of these cutoffs to go, they can go inside that pot there. I'm going to put them in too thick. Rest them everywhere. I mean, the main thing is to not touch the elements. And that's that'll do. Could have got another couple of pots in, but they're not dry. And then uh, it's just a question of shutting down the lid. Switching it on and setting the tire. Okay, this is it shut down now and fastened. Red light here shows that it's live. Uh, there's the switch. This the millibar inside melts, lifts this lever, and this flips down and shuts it off. This here is uh, the time control. This will fire for however many hours I set it, that's eight hours. If anything fails it shuts off with the timer. Down here we've got the rate of uh, this is the rate of uh, four hours before the uh, low ramp comes in so I set it at two and after four hours this ticks round and then it goes on to full power. Uh, I suppose that's as clear as mud to everybody, but uh, that's the way it works. And all we do now is just press. That's the kill now. Okay, that's that sorted out. Uh, I hope that was uh, understandable. <coughs> you can follow that. Uh, now we're going to go on to a small uh, video about turning uh, these pots here. <coughs> we did these earlier, made the video earlier turning the, these pots and then also excuse me turning the little pots I threw off the hump so there'll be a video on that just now okay here we go right I'm just going to um, turn the turn the bases on these uh, the foot rings on these uh, pots I threw the other day and put the slip on I'm using this giffin grip here because the edges are a bit wobbly you can't stick them down onto the wheel head like you normally do and it's all a bit of a, a bit of a guesstimate because these edges are irregular so you have to more or less get it right but it all works eventually and you just flatten off the bottom cut in to the point where I want the foot ring to go to it's all done by eye this I don't have a measurement I just look at what looks well Oops. 
very very rough groggy clay this and it snatches a little bit it's got a quite a big shoulder on this and I keep it fairly flat I don't like wide foot rings on these it doesn't look really nice this gives it a bit more of a delicate look to it I used to put a spiral in this part before but I'm trying to keep it as plain as I can because the, the pot itself is busy. <laughs> if you have a sort of bu busy foot ring or a busy base it sort of overpowers it a little bit so <sighs> it's always good to um, balance out the, uh, the sort of the, the, the whole pot. That's it, this is my stamp. That's all I'm done. Because it's got a narrower because it's got a narrower uh, foot ring here, it, it, it sits well, you know, it lifts up. If it was the foot ring was at the edge here it would look clumpy and clumpy and sort of um, I don't know. Not so sort of pleasing to the eye. Right, second lot of turning I'm doing today. I've just finished the uh, the, the, uh, the, the slipped tea bowls. These are the little kiln fillers that I threw off the hump yesterday. So uh, I'm just going to turn these for you now because they're ready. Well, they're, they're almost ready, but I can do them. These are a lot softer. So these um, are quite a tall foot ring. Oops, stay down. It's pulling out because it's soft. I'm using this hand here to push down on this side, so the, the, the pressure is equal on both sides of the pot. That way it doesn't push off. the base again that's that one done now what I do because we've got a it's thrown off the hump there's a chance this will um, this bit here will s crack on the bottom so what I do with this is I put the stamp in the bottom there and that compresses it a little bit more and it gives it quite a nice effect. These edges need smoothing off a little bit, but they're a bit too wet at the moment. So that's that one done. Right, that's it for today. Uh, all I now have is my question of the day. And um, and that is, uh, what is Kintsugi? What is kin Kintsugi? K-I-N-T-S-U-G-I. -I. I think that's what it's Kintsugi. Right, I'm off. So from me... And Steve and Dave, <clears throat> see you tomorrow.